cool. Going back, you take this experience back with you when you go back to the north and schools and how did you negotiate those different northern, southern and, and, and racism a part of both experiences but but there being some difference. How did you know? Yeah, it's different because when I became a teacher uh, in Bedford-Stuyvesant in um, a school near Atlantic Avenue. That was my first teaching experience was 1950. So it's 53 years now that I've been involved in some way in, in public or private education. And uh, I was assigned a class that was called uh, an opportunity class. It was made up of boys, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade boys, uh, who were considered uneducable, incorrigible. They were not. Um, they were not considered mentally retarded, <clears throat> but they were just uh, behavior problems. So they were put all together in this one class, and I started there in November. And. Um, they told me, they said, we're going to beat the hell out of you, just like we did all the four other teachers who came. You're not going to stay here. And I said, oh, no, because I need a job. <laughs> I started in November. My mother was ill then. And they tried everything they could to run me out of that class. <laughs> but they were so bright. And uh, there was one boy. David Roselle, he was the ringleader. He was the one that was really going to see that I didn't stay. He was going to keep his reputation. Now, in the meantime, the principal told me, just keep them in the classroom. Just keep them from running up and down the hall annoying the other teachers. I had no materials. I had no books. I had no drawing paper. I had nothing. But I was determined to love them because I could see their ability. They could organize and, and assign each other things. And so I decided that I was going to make this work. <clears throat> and one of the things that they taught me was they wanted to read about themselves. They didn't want to read about Ted and Sally. They didn't want to read about Dick and Jane. They didn't have any white house with a white fence. They didn't have no damn red wagon. And so they were telling me what they're asking me to read is not relevant. So I said, well, what do you want to read? Well, they, te they, they tricked me at first. They told me they wanted Pussy and Dick. So I went to the principal and asked him. I thought it was a different reading series. And the principal said, oh, my God, Ms. Hines, close the door and get the guidance counselor. So when I went back the next day, I said, look what you did to me. They said, look, we knew you were dumb, but we didn't know you were stupid. I said, do you know you almost got me fired? Now I said, I think that you owe me something. So the first thing we're going to do is vocabulary. Because I didn't recognize those words. I'm going to teach you your anatomy so you'll know the proper terms. There's nothing wrong with it. It's not dirty. And so that was the, that was the overture. And then they told me that they wanted to read about themselves. So I said, you tell me your story, and I'll write it. And that's how I learned to teach. I learned from them. I did not learn at Wellesley. They told me their story. There are rats in my house. Sometimes we only have beans to eat. Sometimes they get whatever they wrote. They t whatever they told me, I wrote it, and I said, this is David's story, this is John's story, this is Mary's story. Then I extrapolated the words, the ending sounds, the rhyming words, the small words inside, make a sentence. I, the same thing you would do with Ted and Sally, I did with And they were so proud of their stories. They identified with them and we began to learn to, and all of a sudden it became clear that these were very bright children. But they never wanted those children to go back into regular classes. I stayed in that school six years. <clears throat> and then when the new school opened, I went to the new school, which was the Crispus Attic School, in 1956, and I stayed there till 1985. I became principal of that school. And my whole philosophy was, every child has a story. And he wants to read about his story. It's interesting, in yesterday's times, this new school that they're opening, Columbia University, the curriculum for the early childhood's grades is me and myself. The next one is me and my family. The next one is me and my world. So people know, know what's important, but they feel that Every child doesn't have a story, so they have to read someone else's story. But each child has a story and has a life and it has to be validated, and we were quite successful.